At Almond Options, we strive to bring buyers and sellers together in a pleasurable and stress-free environment. Our company is built on over 43 years of ethical practices and the constant refinement of our craft. If you are considering an auction, Almond Auctions has the variety of services you need to make your auction a success. We are a nationwide company serving clients coast to coast and providing over 100 auctions per year. We specialize in antique tractors, farmland, real estate, farm toys, and tractor memorabilia, just to name a few. Visit our website or give us a call for a no-obligation consultation. This is the two-cylinder SD2. This here is the second oldest Shepard uh, known to exist. There's a lot of things that are different on the early Shepherds. The air cleaner is down below the hood. It's got the open brakes. The fenders are vertical. There's several little things that differ on the different on the early um, early Shepherd tractors, and it's, it's kind of kind of neat that the Shepherd serial numbers were down here on this frame. And it's 2-185. What they would do is to fool the dealers that they was building more tractors than they was building, they would do block numbers. They'd make maybe this here was 2185, and the next there might be 298 or, or or 315. They would just skip numbers. So when the dealer come back a month or so later and seen the cylinder a bunch more, he would assume that they were selling a bunch more tractors than they were selling them. So these numbers here are misleading because you assume that they built 185 of these, and this is probably maybe 20, 20 or 25th were built. The reason why I sold a few of these, uh, two things, two or three things actually. One thing is they were high priced. Um, the this tractor here probably cost one and a half times what a farm mall or a John Deere would cost. And the farmers were all scared to death of the diesel engines, this diesel injector pump. The farmer was scared to death of diesels. They were just absolutely afraid the diesel was, diesel was like black magic to them. They were afraid if, if a gas motor, something happened to it, they knew how to put plugs in it, they knew how to put points in it. But a diesel fuel that with no spark plugs, firing on compression, they were scared to death of a diesel engine. And that, that matches the fact that the um, that their dealer networks, there were very few dealers out there. And you know, there's more advertisement for your John Deere's, your Alice Chambers, your your international harvesters. And they, there's one that made advertising out there, so everybody was afraid of them. But 75 of them went to South America. So uh, when you back it up, there are probably less than 75 of these actually was in North America. The two cylinders wasn't near as uh, popular as the three cylinders. This one here is a Shepard Diesel SD3. This was the most popular of the Shepard Diesel tractors. This is the one, I think they sold like 1,400 of these. Um, they were a good running tractor. They ran good. They had a lot of power. They had great fuel consumption. This was their, um, this was their bread and butter here. They built a lot of these. If you see Shepard Diesel that shows, more than likely you'll see the SD3s because everybody liked them. Obviously the SD3s had three cylinders, but after you got past that, from here back, the SD2s and SD3s were identical. Uh, this in here is a little bit later model than the SD2 we just looked at. You'll see it's got the air cleaner up on top here. It's got the fenders that curve over the wheels, and it's got the enclosed brakes, which tells me this is a, a later model. And like that one there was 185 serial number. This one here is um, 4865. So they really jumped the numbers on this one. It was 4865. They're, they're saying they built 4,800 of them. You know, so that's, they really jumped them up. Oh, uh, one thing about it is the um, Shepard. This was a good thing. This bad thing is they used the same transmission rear end as the 30 Cockshot and the E3 Co-op, which was a tempted rear end, which gave them live hydraulics and live PTO. That was a good thing because it was a nice transmission. The bad thing was the three-cylinder Shepherds had a lot more torque in the motors than the uh, cock shots, and it tore the rear ends out of them. So if you really, really, really horse this thing hard, you, you stood a good chance to tear the rear end out of it. And Shepard done something really stupid over here. It's, it's the co-ops co and the, see this handle here? On the co-ops and the cock shots, it's a little short stub right there. And to shift them low to high range, you had to stop and reach down here with your hand and shove that up in there. 
Well, Shepard thought that was kind of awkward, so they put this, this extension on it where you could shift up here on the go. The problem was that that wasn't synchronized. And there are two little tiny shafts going end to end with little splines. And about the eighth or tenth time you yanked her down and ground it in gear, it tore the end of the splines off. So that's another problem is they tore the transmission a lot quicker because they put this little fancy handle up here. Well, when they built their two cylinders and their three cylinders, with having all the rear end problems, Shepard got really aggravated because the problems they was having was not with their product, but with the products they were buying, like transmission rear ends. So they decided they was going to fix that. So they came out with the four cylinder. Everybody wanted bigger. So this four cylinder was built totally by Shepard. Shepard built the motor, they built the transmission, they built the rear end, they built everything. Everything. This is Shepard's tractor all the way through. This was the, uh, had 10 speeds forward, 22 to 1 compression ratio, uh, four plow tractor. This was the ultimate tractor. Then they, it steered a little bit hard, so they went to uh, Ross to get Ross to make a power steering gear for it, gearbox, a power steering gearbox for it. So Ross said, you got limited quantities, we won't do it. So Shepard went to work, and they built their own power steering gearbox for their SD4. And when they went out of the tractor business, that's why they went into the power steering business, because they already was making power steering gearboxes for their Shepard here. Now then, today, every Mack truck on the road has a Shepard steering gearbox in it. Shepard's still in business, alive and well, making power steering gearboxes. They make 80% of, of, the, of the country's power steering gearboxes for the trucks. That's why Peter Shepard is still the son of R.H. Shepard. He's still in business and he still runs the company. Shepard Farms are Hanover Farms in Hanover, Pennsylvania. They still have all their Shepherds on the farms yet. And this is still a built by hand tractor. They never did get away from the, from the built by hand. What they've done on this one right here on the serial number is they quit putting the serial numbers on the tractor. So you have to go back and remember that Shepard built Shepard diesel engines. So this was a Shepard diesel engine that was in a welder, it was in a gen set or a power unit or anything. They used a serial number off the engine for the tractor. So they quit serial number in the tractors totally and just directly the serial number off the engine became the serial number of the tractor. Their own hydraulics on it, their own transmission, their own rear end. Um, the later ones went to a 24 volt system for better starting. Uh, they put block heaters on it here, which looks kind of dangerous. That little block heater plugs in there. They put their own block heater on it. Like I say 22 to 1 compression ratio. The SD2s and SD3s were only 16 to 1. 22 to 1 compression ratio made it a really snappy, snappy tractor. The SD4s are the hardest to restore because with the 22 to 1 compression ratio, he has inherent problems with the uh, injection system. That's what happened to Shepard is they had, Shepard had a, uh, R.H. Shepard felt like that she wanted a low pressure fuel injection system, give you uh, fuel economy at all speed ranges. High pressure fuel injection system only gives you fuel economy at full throttle. So when they, uh, these tractors, as the tractors got more and more complicated, they basically, they run out of their market because there was two, um, they couldn't, they didn't have, they couldn't get much higher RPM because of low pressure fuel injection make them flutter. And Shepard felt like on the head gaskets, he put, put asbestos head gaskets on them, no steel rings. And any time that you overhead, um, over fuel or over pulled the tractor, the head gasket was fused and it would blow the head gasket before it do any serious damage to the engine. So he felt like the head gasket was a fuse so he would never put a steel head gasket on it. And I finally got it. I can say where it, it, it was an absolute one more challenging tractor to work on. Give me just a little bit.